This is Melbourne Quarter, a $2.9 billion city neighborhood built not on solid ground, but on a massive concrete deck suspended over a live freeway. While 11.5 million cars drove directly underneath, over 3,000 workers spent more than 1.3 million hours constructing this engineering marvel. For just one of its towers, they used enough steel to stretch from Melbourne to Perth and poured enough concrete to fill 20 Olympic swimming pools. This audacious project created an entire city block out of thin air, healing a scar that had divided Melbourne for over a century. But how do you pull off such an impossible feat of construction without bringing an entire city to a standstill? To understand how they built it, you first need to understand why they chose this impossibly difficult piece of land. Long before Melbourne existed, this area was a rich wetland, a significant meeting place for the Woiwurrunga people of the Kulin Nation. An elevated piece of land here was known as Batman's Hill, a place likely used for important ceremonies like the Tandarum, where hundreds of people would gather for negotiations, storytelling and dance. In 1837, this very hill was used by surveyor Robert Hoddle as the starting point to lay out Melbourne's famous city grid. But as the city grew, the hill stood in the way of progress. In the 1860s, to make way for the expanding Spencer Street Railway Station, the entire hill was removed, dug up and carried away piece by piece. For the next 150 years, the area was a hub of industry and transport, a place of steel rails, goods sheds, and even a gunpowder magazine built in 1846. A 174 metre long heritage listed retaining wall built in 1890 still stands as a reminder of this industrial past. By the 2000s, it was the last major piece of undeveloped land in the area, a triangular scar separating the city centre from the growing but often criticised Docklands precinct. The challenge wasn't just to build something new, but to heal a divide that had existed for over a century. So how do you start building on a site that is not only historically significant, but also an engineering nightmare? The ground conditions at Melbourne Quarter were extraordinarily complex. The site had a thick, hard layer of ancient volcanic basalt rock near the surface, but underneath that was a soft, unstable mix of clay and silt known as the Werribee Formation. Building a skyscraper here was like trying to build on a dinner plate sitting on top of jelly. Any mistake and the ground could shift, with disastrous results. The solution was to drill deep past the unstable layers and anchor the entire precinct to the bedrock far below. Engineers designed a foundation using 270 massive board piles. These weren't ordinary concrete posts. They were huge, ranging from 600 millimeters to 1.8 meters in diameter, as wide as a small car. They were drilled to depths of up to 50 meters, which is like building a 16-story building, but pointing down into the earth just to create a stable base. Because the soft ground would collapse during drilling, each hole had to be filled with a special polymer support fluid to hold it open long enough to pour the concrete. This entire process had to be done with extreme care, managing three large piling rigs in a tight 7,000 square meter site, all while ensuring the new foundations didn't affect the existing piles for a rail crash barrier right next to the active railway line. With the foundations finally secure, the towers could begin their climb into the sky. The precinct is made up of seven towers in total, three commercial office buildings, two residential apartment towers, a retail building and a wellness hub. The flagship of the project is the Melbourne Quarter Tower, or MQT. It rises 34 levels and stands about 130 metres tall, offering nearly 70,000 square metres of office space. Its unique curved shape isn't just for looks. Architects from Woods Bagot designed the tower to follow the arc of the Wurundjeri Way freeway below it. This curved veil helps the massive building handle strong winds and directs them away from the public square at its base, making the ground level more pleasant for pedestrians. The tower also has a dramatic sloping roof. This was a clever solution to a planning challenge. The design had to make sure that the public parks and squares below still received enough sunlight, and the sloping roof allowed the tower to be tall without casting a permanent shadow on the green spaces. But the most amazing part of this tower wasn't even built on the site. It was built in pieces in factories miles away, ready to be assembled like a giant puzzle. The unique sloping roof of the Melbourne Quarter Tower is an engineering marvel of prefabrication. 
It's made from 700 tons of structural steel, but assembling such a complex shape with its 28-degree pitch, high above a busy city, would have been slow and dangerous. So the engineers decided to build it on the ground first. The entire roof was designed as a series of massive pre-assembled modules. There were 53 modules for the main roof section and another 10 for the plant room that houses the building services. These giant steel sections were built and even partially covered with cladding in controlled factory environments by 30 to 40 different contractors working at the same time. Each module was carefully designed to be just the right size to fit on the back of a truck. They were then driven to the site where a crane lifted them from the freeway level all the way to the top of the 34-story tower. Each piece was placed with extreme precision, a process that required over 26,000 documented welds, which adds up to over 70 kilometers of welding in total. This method of building off-site meant the complex work was done safely on the ground, turning the on-site job into a high-stakes assembly puzzle. But if building a skyscraper over a freeway wasn't enough, the engineers decided to hang a park in the sky. Floating 10.5 metres above the traffic of Collins Street is Melbourne's first sky park. This 2,000 square metre green space is a public park with lawns, trees and seating, all suspended on a massive deck that connects the precinct's commercial towers. Creating this elevated oasis was a huge structural challenge, but keeping people safe was even bigger. The park is surrounded by a special safety barrier that looks delicate but is incredibly strong. It's made from a stainless steel mesh called WebNet, with wires just two millimeters thick. This isn't just a fence, it's a highly engineered full protection system. It has a C5 rating for crowd loads under Australian standards, which means it's strong enough to hold back a large, dense crowd pushing against it with force. But the design is even cleverer than that. This high-strength safety mesh also acts as a trellis for a vertical garden. Climbing plants like Japanese wisteria grow up the mesh, turning a safety feature into a living green wall that provides shade and a connection to nature. It's a perfect example of how the entire project aimed to blend world-class engineering with a focus on creating green, livable spaces, a goal reinforced by the precinct achieving Australia's highest sustainability rating, a six-star green star for communities. The precinct's commitment to sustainability is woven into every aspect of its design. For the buildings, this meant aiming for the highest environmental ratings in Australia. The commercial towers use innovative power over Ethernet, or POE, lighting systems. This technology uses a single standard network cable to provide both power and data to every light fixture, which dramatically reduces the amount of high-voltage electrical wiring needed and allows for a smart, centralized control system. The lights can be dimmed automatically based on the amount of natural daylight or when sensors detect no one is in a room, saving huge amounts of energy. The precinct also features a large-scale water recycling system that captures stormwater, which is then used for irrigating the sky park and other green spaces. For residents, the newest apartment tower is an all-electric building eliminating the need for gas and relying on highly efficient heat pumps for hot water and heating, which can reduce energy use by up to 80% compared to traditional systems. During construction, the project targeted recycling up to 90% of all waste and sourced 95% of its timber from certified sustainable forests. An engineering marvel of this scale doesn't just happen. It takes a huge amount of money and raises important questions about how our cities should grow. The entire Melbourne Quarter Precinct is a $2.9 billion project. The flagship tower alone attracted a massive investment of $1.2 billion from the National Pension Service of Korea, one of the largest pension funds in the world. Other parts of the project are owned by major investment funds like APPF Commercial and Aware Super. Construction on the precinct began in 2016, and the final tower is scheduled to be completed in early 2026 a full decade of work. While the project itself has been celebrated, it exists in a city that has learned hard lessons from past mega-projects. The nearby Docklands area, which began its transformation in the 1990s, has often been criticized for feeling disconnected, windswept, and lacking the vibrant street life Melbourne is famous for. Melbourne Quarter seems to be a direct answer to that criticism. 
by dedicating more than half of its 2.5 hectare site to public open space, creating new laneways like Gunpowder Walk, and using extreme engineering to physically connect itself to the city grid, the project is a bold attempt to ensure a new precinct can be woven seamlessly into the heart of an old city. From a sacred meeting ground to an industrial scar and now to a vision of the future, Melbourne Quarter is more than just a collection of buildings. It is a powerful statement about what is possible. It's a story of engineers who built foundations 16 stories deep into unstable ground, who erected a tower with enough steel to cross a continent, and who suspended a park in the sky, all while a city of millions moved right beneath them. If you enjoyed this deep dive into the engineering behind Melbourne Quarter, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to Ultimate Mega Builds for more stories about the world's most amazing construction projects. Let us know your thoughts on this incredible precinct in the comments below, and don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss an upload.